when I introduced the exponential form of the complex number, I mentioned that multiplication and division become much easier when you've got this form. It also makes it easier to find powers of complex numbers and also to solve equations involving them. So we're going to check that out now. First up, the great thing about exponential form, as it says here, is that we can use the index laws because we've got the numbers written uh, in a form that's got indices in it. So e to the i theta is just an exponential really. So we can use the index laws, things like uh, multiplying a to the b and a to the c means a to the b plus c, and also a to the b over a to the c means a to the b minus c. So that means if you think about that as perhaps becoming an e, if we had two complex numbers divided, we could easily get a new complex number to a different index. And the same over here with multiplication. So that's how we simplify complex number division and multiplication. Down here in the box at the bottom, there's some rules for that. So given any two complex numbers, let's say they're already written in exponential form, but of course you could always change them to exponential form if they weren't. So we've got z and w. z multiplied by w, well that's just simply z multiplied by w would be modulus of z e to the theta i and modulus of w e to the phi i all multiplied together. So the idea is we put the two moduli together like this and then use the index laws e to the theta i times e to the phi i becomes e to the theta plus phi times i. So we add those indices. And the same happens here with division. When we divide two complex numbers we divide their moduli and we subtract the two uh, angles or uh, arguments if you like. So we subtract the two instead of adding them. Just make sure that you've got them in the right order. Z's on top, so theta comes first. W on the bottom, so we subtract phi. So it's as easy as that. Multiplying or dividing two numbers and adding and subtracting two numbers and then just writing them in the complex number form. So let's check it out by example. Let's say we've got Z is 5 e to the pi on 3i. So that remember that means a the number that's five units away from the origin at an angle of pi on three to the positive horizontal axis, and w, which is two e to the pi on six i. I want to calculate the product of the two numbers and the quotient of the two numbers as well. So let's check that out. Simply just write them out in full here just to see what we're doing. Z times w, there's z there, and there's w. Now the rule says we multiply the moduli, so five by two gives us 10 and we add the angles, so pi on 3 plus pi on 6, just have a quick scribble over on the side or do that on your calculator, pi on 3 plus pi on 6 is the same as pi, uh, 2 pi sorry, on 6 plus pi on 6 if we get the common denominator, which is 3 pi on 6 or simply pi on 2. So it's e to the pi on 2 i. Now the question asks us for Cartesian form now remember that the Cartesian form, this would be 10 times cos pi on 2 plus i sine pi on 2. So we can basically just bust that open. So it's going to be, a real part is 10 times the cos of pi on 2, and that's equal to 0. And the imaginary part is 10 times the sine of pi on 2, which is 10, 10 times 1. So we've got 0 plus 10i as our Cartesian result for that number. Okay, so the next part is to divide them, so part B, Z on W, and that's just going to be uh, dividing the two moduli, so it's 5 on 2, 2 and a half if you like, 5 on 2 times E to the pi on 3 minus pi on, making sure that I have those in the right order, so pi on 3 minus pi on 6, I'll just do that over here, I'll put in red minus sign, pi on 3 minus pi on 6, we've got to do the same thing again, so it's 2 pi minus pi on 6 is just going to give us pi on 6 as our result for the subtraction. So we've got 5 on 2 e to the pi on 6 i and to change that back into a, a Cartesian form I'm going to need 5 on 2 times the cosine of pi on 6 and 5 on 2 times the sine of pi on 6, that's my real and imaginary parts. So remember that pi on 6 we can get that from this triangle which is 1 uh, 2 and the square root of 3 over here, so that's the right triangle. Down here is pi on 3, up here is our pi on 6 angle. So cos of pi on 6, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's root 3 over 2. So we've got root 3 over 2 times 5 on 2. 
and the sine of pi on 6, that's opposite over hypotenuse, that's just a half. So we've got 5 on 2 by 1 on 2. Coming back to writing our answer, we're going to have, that'll be 5 root 3 over 4, plus, uh, it's 5 on 4 times i. So that's our Cartesian form for the quotient z on w, or the division of z and w if you want. Okay, so that's how we use our new rule for multiplying, or rules for multiplying and dividing exponential form complex numbers. Let's just extend that a tiny little bit uh, and look at powers in exponential form. So we can find powers, uh, integer powers of complex numbers basically just by repeatedly using the, uh, the multiplication rule here. But if you want, you can just write it in this neat little form here which says that z to the n power, where n is an integer, is the nth power of its modulus and its angle multiplied by n. So it's n lots of the angle and n multiplications of the modulus. So that's our rule for powers, uh, integer powers of complex numbers. So again, let's try that out with another example. We've got z is 5 e to the pi on 3 and I want to calculate z cubed. So we've got z cubed is going to be, just writing it out in full the first time, pi on 3 i and that's all to the third power. Now the rule back here says I want the modulus raised to the nth power as well and I multiply the angle by the power. So it's going to be 5 the modulus to the third power and then basically this is index rules again right because we've got a 3 out here we bring it in and multiply it by that index. So it's 3 times pi on 3 i. We can do a little simplifying. 3 by pi on 3 that's just pi and 5 to the 3 that's 125. So, final result, 125 e to the pi i. Ah, not final result. Again, we've got Cartesian form, so make sure we do that. e to the pi i, that's just cos pi. So we've got 125 cos pi is our real part, and 125 sine pi is our imaginary part. Cosine of pi is minus 1, so that's minus 125 and 125 times the sine of pi, sine of pi is 0, so we get 0 for the imaginary. So our final result in Cartesian or rectangular form is minus 125, just a plain old real number. So sometimes you can get real numbers by operating on complex numbers, interestingly enough. Um, imagine if you didn't have this rule back here, uh, the, the rule for the exponential form powers, and if you'd been asked to find this uh, using just the regular old Cartesian rule. It'll be quite tedious. So this way is actually a lot quicker. Anyway, that's it for this uh, little bit, this little section. So you can now, if you're looking along with the textbook, you can read through all of section 3.2. We're finished with that now. You can attempt all the exercises there and from the worksheet. And again, I'm still asking this question. We've seen now how to find integer powers of complex numbers, but what about if they're not integers? What if they're things like square roots or cube roots or some other sort of fractional roots? Think about that. We're going to check that out in the next video. Make sure you get any questions you've got answered, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.